All right. All right, so marketing. Now, here's what I want everybody in here. Everybody in here got up here and talked about their business or the business they're going to start. I want you to think in terms of <coughs> your multi-million dollar brand. And when you think about your business, you know, more of a brand, it conjures up different, conjures up different kind of images of what you should be doing with it, okay? So if you're thinking about your brand, how many of you are thinking about merchandise for your brand? You know, ID bracelets. All your t-shirts. Most of you are not thinking like that, right? Yeah, you got to do that. You guys ever seen something called God Goals? Ever heard of this guy? He's called the Goals Guy. And he's in my, that networking group I mentioned earlier. He's in that group as well. So basically, he trademarked God Goals question mark. He trademarked that a few years ago. And this guy does you know, double-digit millions on merchandising. So he has. A, if you go to GodGoals.com, he has a starter package that has this, has a, a baller band, or like an ID band that I just showed you. It has notepads. It has T-shirts. He sent me a sample pack, and it's $89.95 when he does his, his uh, when he does that initial thing. But I mean, he, he sells it to corporations. He sells it. How many different people? Everybody talks about goals. If you want to stick with confidence, you can build a brand all around confidence. Right? I have, I'm doing the same thing with teamwork. All around teamwork. You guys see what I mean here? It's like, it's not just you selling your service or that one product. It's creating an empire around a brand. So now this thing that started out being, you know, something for corporations, he's putting a, a soccer ball right there. And then he and I are talking about putting a basketball where the O is. So got goals, because basketball goals, soccer goals. That. So you see what I mean? It's a completely different way to look at it. It's a different paradigm. Yeah, completely. So from a marketing standpoint, you all need to be thinking about not just what your, your immediate product line is going to be, your books, your seat, that's all a part of it, but merchandising, T-shirts, right, websites, communities. Because what you're attempting to do, I love the word brand, so you're attempting to brand your empire, your name, into the hearts and minds of, of consumers. And you can't. And it's a lot easier to brand that if every time you turn around you're seeing it. Why do you think McDonald's kicks butt, you know, Burger King's butt, and Jack? Because every time you turn around, you're looking at a McDonald's. If you're not looking at it physically, you're seeing it uh, on the radio, seeing it on television. Okay. Same thing with your brand. Well, how can you how can you make your brand everywhere, even when you're not? Even when you're not everywhere, how can you make sure that your brand is everywhere? Okay, so when I talk about marketing, kind of innovative marketing things, most people are so not creative. <coughs> you know, they're just not very creative when it comes to thinking about how you can get your name out there. So what are some of the ways that you all, think about your current business, you can innovatively market yourself? Okay, beyond word of mouth, what else? Billboards. What else? Yellow pages. Yellow pages? Okay. YouTube. No. Drawing. YouTube. Writing. What's that? Writing utensils. Writing utensils. Direct mail. Direct mail. Right. Also use like Facebook to do the social media. Yeah. All the blogs. All of the blogs. Voice broadcasting, right? I talked about that earlier. You can, and what's kind of cool is you can do voice broadcasting via email. Yep. Through through just uh, recording something and attaching it to your email, like video marketing. Mm -hmm. Yep. What about client newsletters? Newsletters. Back to the church. Well, Back. Okay. What else? When when your when your local schools have a play, don't put your money into a sports program. People are looking for their kids' jerseys and their numbers. They're not looking at the ad. Mm -hmm. The school play, they're bored. They're sitting there. They'll read every piece of that page while they're sitting there between acts, and they'll read your ad. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like knowing when in what to place it in. 
Radio? Yep. Essentially, if, if something is in print or in some electronic media form, you can advertise it. What if you had a product that was complimentary to my basketball DVDs? I mean, you guys tend to think in the ways that most people think about inserts. It. You can do inserts into my DVD. You can literally have a commercial at the front of before I come on and do my little um, shooting tip. I can put your your thing there. Okay. Before before someone listens to my speaking eight millions audio CDs, we can have a little uh, an advertisement from you. Chamber yeah, chamber of commerce. But think about, think about, I mean, literally, if there's space, space, fill it up. Something should be there. A car, and everything is real estate, right? Car, your car is real estate. Everything is real estate. So when, and now, I, every time I see something, I just think, oh, wow, that could be, I can have something on there. I have a client who yes. uh, was emailing, doing an email blast, doing a newsletter. And because of the building she was in downtown, there's a uh, coffee shop came in mm -hmm. and said, do you mind me just putting a little, you know, if they come in, they get a, something, something or another. Right. And now people are fighting for ad space on her newsletter. Because on the left side are coupons yeah. of the restaurants and the whatever that are in that high-rise building. Yeah. Oh, that, there are so many ways to do that with, like, booster clubs. They all have newsletters. Mm -hmm. Chambers have newsletters. Mm -hmm. You know, they how many other, and they email them, and, they, and a lot of them because they're using that, constant contact type of form, they've got the ability to have click through um, real estate. Yeah, that's that's huge. Yep. Put, put your fish, work with your local restaurants, put your fish bowl in, drop it here for a complimentary okay. dinner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, goodie bags, think about that. Every time, think about the people who are doing events who want to fill up their registration bags. Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes you'll have to pay for that, but if it's a real targeted audience and you know you want chiropractors who just got out of school, just started their practices, that's the audience you want, then it may be worth it for you to pay $100 to be in the goodie bag. Sometimes people just want to fill up the goodie bag and have something to give people who attend something. Sometimes they won't charge you anything at all. Yes? Trade shows mm -hmm. that you don't attend, you hire some. You put your goodie bag together. You hire somebody to go through that trade show. You go to every booth and say, uh, "So and so's uh, was not, had these made. They weren't able to show up, but we wanted you to have our information." You didn't have to buy the booth. Right. All you did was put the goodie bag together. <coughs> and so now you got your information to every vendor at that trade show. Yeah. Yeah. Any other marketing things? Any other marketing tactics? Anything on. Uh, easingarticles.com, like some article submissions. Articles, sponsors. Yeah, go articles. <coughs> okay. All right, the last thing is the second to the most ignored thing beyond, beyond potential barriers to success. The other thing that people don't tend to think about are their biggest expenses in phases. Biggest expenses. Phase one, if I stay with Fran Harris Basketball, the biggest expense in phase one is going to be getting my collateral material, right? That's seven grand, right, Noel? Yep. <laughs> That's seven plus grand, all right? Biggest expense. What is your biggest expense at this part, at this point in your in your business? Is it is it like me, marketing materials, collateral, meaning your website, your business cards, what is it? The next phase, phase two, what is it? There is an expense associated with taking your business from one level to the next. And that expense may be in training, it may be in coaching, it may be in materials you need to buy. So think of your business in three phases. Phase one, which is really kind of like that startup, which can be you know from concept to five or ten years, depending on how you move. Phase two is kind of what I call the growth, kind of like your toddler year, sort of. And that could include expenses associated with coaching, you know, better, better materials, whatever it is that gets you from the <coughs> $10,000 range to the $100,000 range. You need to plan for that. Because what happens with most entrepreneurs is that they don't plan for it, and then they're like, they get to the place where they want to grow, and they haven't thought about it. 
They haven't thought about what I, what what is it going to take to get you from where you are today to where you want to be. Okay? Fair the materials, whatever. And then phase three is what I call expansion and exit. Everybody in here should have an exit strategy for their business. And in fact, I start thinking, like I did with College Entrepreneur, I start thinking about my exit strategy the day I start the magazine. Now, people may say, well, why would you think about getting out of the business the day you're getting into the business? Because that's what multi-billionaires and billionaires do. That's what they do. I am not in the magazine publishing business to nurture it, to be my baby. You know, I'm not, I'm not in that. I'm about turning profitable businesses. I started it because I love it. I'm leveraging it, but the day I started it, when I wrote that business plan from New York to LA, because that's where I was living at the time, I started, I said, oh, this is going to be so exciting. I sell it for so much money. And I immediately went to my exit plan, my exit strategy. The exit strategy is to build up the database, build up the asset, build up the property so that it's desirable for people to buy it. But you started with the end. In mind. Right, exactly. Exactly. So you got three phases. Your startup. Think about the biggest expenses at this phase in your business. Your growth stage. What is it going to take to get you to whatever your next income dream is? Or whatever the, whatever the, the carrot or the, the financial, the quantifiable thing that you're shooting for. What's it going to take you to get to there and how much is that going to be potentially? Okay? And then phase three, to really expand it to make it desirable so that you can sell it. What is that going to do? How much is that going to take to get it to that level? Okay, biggest expenses. You need to be thinking about this. You do not, there's no reason for you to be surprised when you leave here today by anything. You know exactly what's about to come down. You know, life happens, things happen, but you pretty much have an idea. I pretty much had an idea from three weeks ago in Frisco what we needed to do to move product, what we needed to do, how many events we needed to go to. Okay, there are no surprises. Any questions about any of that? Any questions? Uh, when you exit the, uh, uh, like, you know, okay, you build a business and then your exit strategy is selling it, would you, would you just sell it for maybe a certain rate or would you still be like a part owner? Yeah, you know, <coughs> what you decide is you figure out once you get there, if you've done this really well and done this really well and done this first part really well, then you should be in a position to say, I'd like to be on as a board member or you know, to run this division or whatever. At that point, if you've done that well, you should be able to do whatever you want to do. You know? Or like, I'm done with it. I mean, my sense is with college entrepreneur, I'm like, I'm done with it. Right? Um, and then I may feel like, you know what, I'd like to tour the country one year, just kind of talking about how I started this business from nothing and built it to a billion dollar company in four years. That's what. So I may say, if you'll let me do that, I'm out, and you can have it and whatever. So what you should have at that point is leverage to do what you want. Yeah. Okay? All right, let's take a 10 minute break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about your business model and how simple it should be and it should fit on one sheet of paper, your entire business model. I'm going to show you the Fred Harris basketball business model and then you're going to write your own business model out and alleviate any mystery that some of you have about your operations.